How are we doing for time? 11. 11, okay. Mm. Perfect. So um, is everybody happy for us to, to kick things off? Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Ready when you are. Yeah. Brilliant, okay. Um, well, thank you everyone for attending our session today. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules um, to be with us this morning. Um, you will be pleased that you made the effort though, um, as we do have lots of really great stuff to share with you, um, all designed uh, to arm you with strat strategies uh, that will help you re rebuild, reshape and drive success. So let's go into some intros, um, as it's only polite. Um, I'm pretty sure you all know the legend that is Guy Griffith, so um, uh, probably doesn't need to introduce himself, but I will hand over um, and let him do his thing. Well, thanks, Joanna, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me on this webinar. Guy Griffiths, uh, my company is GG Fit, which I founded in 2008 to help people get fitter and healthier, but not actually by working with the people, by working with clubs. So um, in a nutshell, what we do at GG Fit is help clubs to get their members to stick around longer. Um, and lately, we've been more focused on health seekers necessarily than fitness enthusiasts, but that, that, that will do for now as an intro. Thank you, Guy. Yeah, it's really great to be collaborating you with on, with you on this. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Simon Wilkinson now. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, I seem to be having camera issues just for people who are not aware. I'm sure. Yeah, Guy's already commented about face for radio, which I'm <laughs> I'm more I'm more than happy to agree with. So apologies, everybody, that you can't see me, but hopefully the words are slightly more important. Uh, I am the sport and fitness lead for Tanita in the UK. And my main responsibility is, is to support the health and fitness industry in, in using bioimpedance analysis technology and, and body composition assessments to, to the full potential for whatever sector they're in. Perfect. Thank you, Simon. And um, finally, I'm Jo, um, and I'm the Senior Marketing Manager here at Clubwise. Uh, hopefully, um, some of you have already heard of us, um, and I can see that we do have some of our customers with us this morning, which is really great to see. Um, but for the benefit of those that aren't familiar with Clubwise, I will run through a very, very quick intro. Um, Clubwise is an easy to use all-in-one club management solution for fitness clubs, um, and it provides the freedom to focus on what matters most, um, your members. Um, so we first launched in 2001 in the UK, um, and we recently expanded into the US, and we currently support more than 1,000 fitness clubs across the US, um, UK, Ireland, and Australia. Um, our main goal at Clubwise is to, is to help remove the administrative headache um, that comes with running a gym, um, while also offering scalable um, solution that features unique engagement tools to help improve member engagement and, and retention. Um, so if any of you would like to learn more about Clubwise, please feel free to reach out to me after this session, or you can visit our website, clubwise.com. So I'm going to kick off this session with a really compelling quote um, from Greek philosopher Socrates um, that really resonated with me, um, as I'm sure it will with you all too. Um, so the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. So the industry has done an amazing job of adapting and rebuilding during and after enforced closures. The expedited move to digital, and virtual offerings was a significant shift um, in the way clubs operated. Um, and many of these models are here to stay for the foreseeable future anyway. Um, this shift has presents, presented opportunities for clubs to weave in new business models um, and drive additional revenue. But um, there is another huge opportunity staring the industry in the face right now. And that is what this session is going to share with you and um, give you some strategies um, around how you can tap into that. So before we start to explore the opportunity, I just wanted to look at some um, statistics, uh, recent statistics from Club Intel. So 31% of members um, indicated that they canceled their membership during mandated gym closures. Um, this percentage jumps to 50% for Gen Z and 45% for millennials, but drops to 12% for boomers. So what are the implications for operators? So operators will need to resell their value proposition to approximately 30% of members. And in the case of Gen Z and millennials, we sell their value proposition to approximately half of those young member groups. So this new sale will be different than pre-COVID-19 and will require reshaping the facility's value proposition and messaging. A new or at least updated story needs to be told. 
So consumer behaviour, let's look at how that's changed. So the recent annual UK wellness index survey showed that 82% of Brits state that wellness is more important now than ever. Um, and 38% of people said they are now more focused on wellness because they want to lose weight they gained during the pandemic. Um, and a massive 61% said that COVID-19 has made them realise that they need to be healthier to withstand illness. So, I mean, it's pretty clear, but, but what's it showing? It's showing that the nation, as the nation recovers from the biggest public health crisis in living memory um, and learn to live with COVID-19, uh, many people want to improve their physical and mental health and resilience. Um, and with the right tools, clubs are uniquely positioned to be able to help with this. And I'm sure you've all seen the statistic from the 2021 Public Health England survey. It again just reinforces the opportunity that we have in front of us. Um, so this is the new story. This is the platform for which you build out your reshaped value proposition. So how does it look? So by applying greater focus on the holistic health benefits that consumers are now seeking, uh, you could reach a whole new client base, increase your membership yield and retain members longer. But how? And this is where Simon comes in. So I'm going to hand over to Simon now. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. I can. Uh, we've not been on camera. Can I pretend this picture's me on the? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's the sort of that's the other you. image. What, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> we'll go with that being me. So yeah. So I guess uh, body composition analysis and BIA isn't isn't a new technology. You know, the, the, it's been around for about 25 years and has always been wild, widely used within the medical and clinical sectors and professional sport. And it was little, used a little bit within fitness for quite a long period of time. But like a lot of the health assessment things, it perhaps wasn't utilised to its full potential and the understanding of the technology wasn't there. And I think it's those two things that have started to change, which has now resulted in the technology being more popular than ever within the fitness industry. You know, you struggle to walk into any any major sort of uh, multinational gym without seeing a BIA device anymore. And that's only, only increasing. And it's because the technology is advanced and people's understanding of it has advanced. And those are sort of two things that... that uh, us at Tanita really want to stress the importance of. So why has it got more popular, particularly in the last five or six years and what we're seeing right now moving forward? So the benefits we're going to focus on uh, in three columns, we're going to firstly focus on the club benefits, then the benefits to, to you as a personal trainer, perhaps, or the personal trainers in your club, and then finally the benefits to the gym member. So benefits to the club are things along the lines of generating health awareness campaigns to attract new clients. This isn't a new thing. It's something that's taken on a much greater prevalence in the last few months and will continue to do so. But creating health awareness campaigns has always been important. Attracting new clients for the focus on muscle mass or body fat or visceral fat, what, whatever it might be, showing that you can measure those things and educate your members on those things helps to attract new clients to your business. There's the potential to generate additional revenue. So charging for personal consultations, which is something that I won't go into too much detail on because I know Guy will cover this with great expertise, but also cross-promoting health product sales. Lots and lots of gyms that I go into will also sell a supplement range or a drinks range. And using the data from the body composition analysis to look at hydration or to look at lean muscle mass, cross-selling those products then is, is much easier to do than promoting them to people who don't really necessarily have an understanding of the benefits that, that they can promote. And then enhanced diet and nutritional programs. You know, lots of gyms sell personal training programs, but how many offer a diet and nutrition program? You know, we have lots and lots of health seekers who go looking at, you know, less qualified, less professional, high street uh, nutritionists. We won't mention any brand names, but I'm sure you can think of them to support them with their diet. Why are they not coming to the gym? Why are they not coming to fitness professionals who've got qualifications in nutritional support to do this? Again, promoting the body composition elements, the measurements that you can monitor, and your skill set can attract those members who may be more focused in what they eat 
rather than what they do. And those two things you can then hopefully join together when you're working with them. From a management perspective, you can analyse current practices and effectiveness of your programmes, your personal trainers that you've got working for you. You know, if you have a eight week fat loss programme, well, how are you judging the effectiveness of that? If you're judging it on how much weight people have lost, can you call it a fat loss programme? How do you know how much fat they've lost? So specifically looking at the elements for fat loss programs, muscle build programs, what, whatever they are, how effective are they and how are you analysing that? The data from body composition allows you to go into real detail to make sure all those programs that you offer, all the trainers potentially who are working for you are having as much impact on your members as possible. Now, we've mentioned body composition is prevalent within the fitness industry, but that doesn't mean you can't develop your own bespoke and original experience around it. How you use it can be much different to how the gym next door uses it. It's a technology remains the same, but the experience you create either through consultations, ongoing support, how you present the information to your members, how they can access that information can be original for you. And members like originality. They like something that they haven't seen before. And then finally, utilizing the data for challenges and competitions. I know Guy's a big advocate of challenges and competitions to engage and communicate with your members. How are you doing that? What are you showing them about successful challenges and the impact that's had on, on their health? The data from body composition allows you to set challenges that could be as simple as here's this month's muscle build challenge or this month's fat loss challenge or metabolic age challenge. Who can reduce their metabolic age by the most? All of these are things that tie back into body composition and, and really engage with your members. So benefits for the trainer themselves. You might be a personal trainer watching this or, or you might want to know how you can better support your personal trainers on site. Now, if you're using body composition with a client, you get an instant snapshot of their health and fitness status that can be used to develop a personalized program, step-by-step -step targets built around their needs, their goals, their lifestyle. You know, every personal trainer I see offers personalized programming. And then a lot of what I see is the same, just slightly tinkered with for each different client. Now, if you're showing them this baseline data of their current health status, highlighting the things that you as a fitness professional know they need to improve on, and this is how you're going to do it, the buy-in from that from clients will be much, much greater because they can see it's about them. You've developed this program on the back of the data about them, and that's a really powerful message. Hopefully then you demonstrate the direct impact of your exercise program or your nutrition program justifies your role because you're clearly showing them the results. They might feel better. They might look better. Those genes might fit a little bit better, but you're showing them clearly they've lost 5% body fat. They've gained two kilograms of muscle. Their metabolic age has reduced by five years. Whatever that might be, it massively increases your chance of retainment. If they're engaged in that process, they can see real change and improvements. They are going to book again. They're going to book some more sessions. You can use that data that you've seen to show this is what we need to work on next. This is what we want to do now. Shift that focus to hydration, for example, and engage that client on another six or eight sessions with a slightly different focus using that wide amount of data that's available. And for me personally, the most important point is this moving away from weight and BMI. I would go as far as saying if you are monitoring clients on weight and BMI, you are doing them a disservice. Weight and BMI is OK for the NHS. They have one piece of data for 60 million people. But you're not working with 60 million people. Your focus is one person. And if a, if a gym member or a client feels like they are that important person, they are going to stick around longer. You can open a wider discussion about health, not just how much they weigh, how much muscle have they got, and how does that impact weight and BMI? They may be oblivious. Educate them. Look at the hydration. Look at their visceral fat. 
engage them in the whole you're here to be healthier not lighter initiative and that's again really really powerful for members and clients to hear and finally benefits to members this is the longest list for a reason because ultimately they're the most important people the list could be longer we've had to narrow it down a little bit just to try and keep within our time frame but members are getting a really personal analysis of their health not just their weight not just their fat but their entire health it shows quantifiable progress of whatever program you are focusing on you can show them the progress in black and white it's not black and white as we'll see soon it's really nice colorful graphs and progress charts it's really engaging but it's so clear for people to see it's really really easy step on a scale that's it it's non-intrusive there's no physical contact you know we'll touch on this in a minute but there's a reason why those health assessment rooms where you did waste measurements and caliper testing gathered dust and nobody rebooked that second measurement because it wasn't an enjoyable experience. Stepping on a scale, non-intrusive, clinically accurate, and it's educational and motivational is a really, really engaging process. You will have to try and put people off doing too many body composition measurements as opposed to having to chase them around the gym and try and catch them every time they come in to rebook their second health assessment appointment like you used to have to do a number of years ago. So I guess very, very briefly, because I understand we may have a people who have a varying levels of understanding about BIA and body composition analysis. We're gonna very quickly look at the uh, body composition against some traditional measurements and then how BIA has improved in the last few years. So BMI, we've mentioned really, really, big limitations if you are discussing health with an individual it doesn't take into account age ethnicity changes to body composition over time athletic physiques all these things can skew a bia uh, a bmi measurement bia however focuses on those individual elements that make it up the graph on the right is one of my favorites that that i show I show clients or I tell gyms to show this to their clients if they're a little hooked on BMI. And what it basically shows is somebody's weight staying pretty stable across the top at 80 kilograms throughout their life. Now, unless they're shrinking massively, their, their BMI is going to be pretty stable between the ages of 25 and 75. But their body fat doubles over that time. Doubling of body fat comes with health implications that BMI would not pick up. BIA allows you to have a really detailed discussion around that and what you can do to support it. So better than BMI, we have waist circumference caliper measurements. You know, these are better because they're actually measurements on that person. It's personal for them. But there are issues with this. Issues with accuracy, you know, taking these two measurements accurately involves a skilled practitioner. Anyone can buy calipers, anyone can buy a tape measure, but how skilled are you with them? The error in measurement technique is massive. That then leads to fluctuations, inaccurate results, members that are a little bit confused about what's happening. And it's not a nice experience. We've touched on this already. People who have maybe uh, an obesity problem or a body fat problem that's why they've come to you the last thing they want to do is you know partially undress in a room and be pinched with calipers nobody booked those second health assessments or very few people booked those second health assessments it wasn't engaging BIA body composition analysis is engaging and this sort of table very quickly shows how BIA professional BIA is much, much closer within a few percentage in terms of accuracy against things like DEXA scan, MRI scan, uh, air distribution, BOD pod, if people are familiar with them. Those laboratory methods of assessing body composition, professional BIA is within a few percent of those. It's a considerable distance ahead of BMI, waist circumference and skin folds. But the cost, yeah, professional body composition devices are not cheap, 
but they're not as expensive as a DEXA scan or an MRI scan. There are much, they are much closer to the price of those less accurate methods. So in terms of accuracy, repeatability, speed of execution, the investment and how members engage with the process, BIA has become the go-to measure for both the health and fitness industries. So very quickly, how does it work? I'm not going to bore you with the technical detail, but I think it's, it's really important from us at Tanita that people understand BIA technology has moved on like any technology. If the last time you took any attention to it or paid any attention to it was 5, 10, 15 years ago, the technology is much, much different. In principle, it works the same. You stand on electrodes, you hold electrodes. The most accurate devices are segmental, so you will hold and stand on electrodes and low electrical frequencies are passed through the body. Now, multi-frequency technology is what is pretty new to the industry. Multi-frequency technology basically means those higher frequencies can penetrate cellular membrane and take intracellular data. So we call this resistance and now reactance technology. Resistance technology has always been used. Body fat slows down the frequency. It offers a resistance to the electrical frequency. So how long that frequency takes to get from point A to point B, that amount of resistance, fat mass is then calculated. New BIA technology, though, also looks at cellular reactance. So when those frequencies pass through cellular membrane, a fat cell, for example, is approximately 10 to 12% water content. A muscle cell is approximately 75, 80% water content. Water conducts electricity. The cell, based on that water content, offers a different reaction, which allows BIA to now get a much more accurate and consistent interpretation of your body composition. So what measurements, or I think the next slide, Joe, is uh, what measurements are available? So we're not going to go through them all here. Some are obvious, some are less obvious. Metabolic age is right at the top of that list because that's such an engaging measurement for people. How old am I? How old am I based on my internal health, on my fat and muscle? Wow, people get so motivated in a boat in a good way and a bad way when they look at their metabolic age but as you can see it offers a full range of genuine health measurements not just body fat machine as we as it often gets referred to so metabolic age we've just mentioned everybody loves metabolic age what i want to highlight here is that bia and body composition will appeal to every single member you have in your club it isn't just for weight loss people. Metabolic age, everybody gets interested by metabolic age. When we go to events and people sort of find out they can, they can see their metabolic age, the cues go around the event for people to take a measurement. Segmental fat and muscle is really interesting to those fitness fanatics or any athletes that you might have training in your facility. On the other end of that, anyone who's rehabbing from an injury, you're looking at muscle mass in each leg before, during, and after treatment is a really powerful and useful measurement. You can assess visceral fat, which is a fat located around the abdomen and internal organs. So particularly for weight loss people, particularly for, for 50 plus, where visceral fat can become a serious issue, that's another message that you can really educate members on and attract them by, by measuring and monitoring your visceral fat. A total body water appeals to everybody. If you are in a gym, you are focused on health, whether you're working out or just having a, a, a nutritional program put together. Total body water is probably the most essential measurement that we can give. Everybody is interested in this being healthy. Sarcopenic index is quite a new measurement, but one that's getting lots of focus with, with those health seekers in particular. It's, it's essentially a risk indicator for developing sarcopenia, which is the loss of muscle mass and function, usually associated with age, 
but more recently being diagnosed in younger people due to sedentary lifestyles. So there is definitely an interest, again, for the active ages 50 plus market who are most at risk of this, educating them on what sarcopenia is and the fact that you can monitor it can offer a real, real engagement factor and get people built into those memberships and personal training plans to alleviate the effects of sarcopenia. And finally, BMR. So BMR, the amount of calories required by the body at rest. Weight loss in particular, crucially important for a healthy weight loss program, but also your athletes, your fitness fanatics who might be, you know, counting calories and weighing food for a completely different reason. Knowing a a clinically accurate BMR for them allows them to, to do that planning to a much more personal level. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Simon. I'm going to hand over to Guy now to um, to talk about um, some new business models. Amazing. Thanks, Joe, and thanks, Simon, for the, the, the for, for teeing that up with all the science. Um, every time I see Simon speak, I learn something new. Um, we we used to do some of these in person a couple of years ago, and I'll, I look forward yeah. to doing them again because okay. I'm I'm not as I kind of alluded to in the headline. I'm not a fitness professional. Um, all you guys out there running gyms know a lot more about. Um, physical fitness than me uh, but what I do know and study and, and work with is the kind of strategy and the data um, and it's really nice to have all, all the kind of the, the, the hard work done actually by Joe, Joanne and by Simon in teeing this up and I can just kind of go into the what we are doing to get people healthier and talk a little bit about these new business models. So um, I think the first slide talks about, um, it just sets the scene again, it's the stuff that Joe was talking about earlier in terms of the, you know, seven out of 10 people want to get healthier. But here's our traditional um, club with, let's say there's a thousand members, probably 500 of them just visit the gym. Um, another maybe three, 400 also go to classes. Um, and then there's maybe 10% who, who enjoy some PT as well. Um, and what we're always trying to do at GG Fit with clubs that we're working with is to push people up that pyramid and get them to the top because we know they'll stick around longer. Um, actually, we often work with the gym members at the bottom more because they need more retention, um, retention, attention, if that's a thing. But what we're doing here is we're building a new layer almost underneath the gym members and saying, look, we could just have, rather than coming into the gym and working out or running on the treadmill, going to a class, just come in for your health check each month, which I'll go through in a minute. And these are our health seekers. And initially, clubs look at this and think, that's great, because then we can push people up the pyramid um, to become gym members. However, that's a limiting belief as well, because if we broaden this out, we can say, look, let's offer health seeker memberships to everyone, whether or not they want to come to the gym or not, because we've got 15% around penetration, people who like going to the gym. I think actually 10% of the population possibly less like going to the gym the other five do it because they feel they ought to or because they're paying for it um so there's 90 percent of the population out there or at least 85 who aren't going to join the gym but they are absolutely interested in their health and in their well-being so if we can help them to check their health then they can sign up for a subscription or a membership and then there are other pyramids that we can build on top of this um, by offering lots of other products for example remote coaching nutrition that simon's talked about um ems workouts electromuscular stimulation i think um but i mean this is just one pyramid there's probably four or five other pyramids that health clubs could be building and could be offering if they have this broad health seeker membership vision of course members are going to migrate and they're going to transfer um we might get them from remote coaching to become gym members maybe during the winter or in the summer months, people might say, I don't want to come to the gym and, and work out on the treadmill because I'm doing part run now or I'm playing tennis. So there's there's a transition between these and, and members will be, be transferred. But the point is they'll be transferred rather than lost. Um, and if at our 1,000 member club, we could have another 1,000 health seekers, um, even just paying 20, 25 pounds a month, we'll get on to some numbers in a minute, um, then whether they're subscribers or members, it's all the same thing really. These are people that you now have who are linked or associated with or, or basically members of your club that you can be marketing to, not necessarily selling the gym. If they want to join a gym, they'll come and join. 
um, but there's lots of other products and lots of other business opportunities and different verticals that you can be offering them and they will be your subscribers so they'll be they'll be open to receiving those kind of communications and support so the way that the health check works as we see it um sorry simon that's actually a body stat machine there but um it's got to body tracks that's fine that's fine. body tracks it's got tanita inside it that's um, a tanita machine inside it it's all good it it's all good um the point the, the good thing about this photo is this is someone having a consultation they're being supported there by a coach there are other images that we use from time to time which is someone just standing on a tanita machine kind of self-serving which is possible but the whole idea of this model is that people come in for their measurement so they get their body composition analysis done with a coach and then they move on through steps two which is the consultation explaining i would say some of the metrics as simon says there's 25 or more different um stats that come off that machine and, and there's a, a big printout um loads and loads of numbers the metabolic age is the one that people tend to focus on um that's nearly always the big one um and people want to know how to get that down okay, well, you get that down, for example, by drinking more water or by being more active or whatever other reasons. And let's pick two or three more that are personalized to the member. Then that consultation goes on and we talk about some goals. There's hopefully lots of listening. Um, there's not too much, you know, traditional, what I would call traditional PT, let's try and get you a six pack. But it could be that people are going to go off and, do more walking or drink more water or join park run or buy a dog. Um, we don't need to talk about treadmills and kettlebells and, and, and the gym. Um, if they want that, they will ask you for it. Generally, people want to have, a, a, putting it very simply, a nice chat about their goals to set some targets. And then the third and most key point is that we just book a follow-up session in typically one month's time. Um, there is flexibility around that. Most of the people we are seeing having appointments at clubs are booking a follow-up because they absolutely see the value in that 30-minute consultation. However, the handful who aren't booking a follow-up appointment, that's fine. If they don't want to book and pay for their appointment in one month, we will market to them. We will get them back in three months or in six months. Or guess what? In a year's time, we'll say, hey, Simon, your metabolic age this time last year was uh, 45. <laughs> um, I, hope not. <laughs> I, I wonder I wonder what it is now you know is it 46 one year later why not come back in for a measure and find out so that's yeah one two three appointment consultation uh, and, and then follow up how to sell it um so the the important part here is using language that doesn't necessarily talk about fitness or exercise even it's about understanding it's about education so come down to the health club not the gym um, or possibly even come to the um, outpost where we have our um, body composition machine and, and we will help you understand your health. Um, Simon's already talked about the fact that it's non-invasive. You don't even have to wear form-fitting clothing, which you do with things like 3D body scan, which are also interesting. But take your socks off, jump on the scales, and let's find out about you. Talk about results as well. Talk to them about, you know, what is working with their health? What have they been doing during lockdown? Is it making a difference? Lots of people have taken up new forms of exercise. What's that exercise doing to them? So, um, and if they've taken up uh, some kind of online or, or as I say, part run or something like that, um, to understand what difference it's making to their health. But mainly deliver lots of value. Anyone can go to the boots even and, and, and get a, um, a set of you know some stats off, off some weighing scales and a lot of members have historically um, jumped on what's wrongly called the body fat machine at their gym or local leisure center and, and got some measurements and maybe been put off by things like BMI so the value really is in the consultation um, and in the, the listening to the member about what they're going to be doing and then um, you know, what their goals are, what their targets are, how they're going to, as I say, drink more water for the next few weeks uh, and come back and see what their intracellular water, getting slightly out of my depth in the water there, but seeing what that measurement is. And we've had people come back for their second measure and go, that has been their goal to drink more water. They've come back and said, I know it's going to be better because my headaches have gone. And, and that's the kind of difference. Obviously, we've also got a metric to show how that works. 
So just a couple of example campaigns. I'm, I'm always keen to, um, on, on whatever I'm speaking in person or online webinars, to, to give people what they need and you can go away and run with this. Uh, but these are the kind of campaigns that we have been running. So targeting members who have left in the last year um, or, or who, who used to be dormant members um, and you know are not coming back um, and saying, look, we want to support your health. So click here to get a funded health check. Um, we never use the word free. As soon as you say it's free, it devalues it. We normally put what the value of the health check is. So the follow-up campaigns we were sending yesterday were either £30 or £50 value for a one-off health check. But we've got a limited number of funded ones. No one asks who they're funded by. Um, well, no one has yet anyway. Um, but the thing is there, click here, click here to book. That will go out on a text and, and on an email. It could go on a postcard. It could go in a letter. Um, but get that out to your ex-members. One of the key things we always put on these campaigns, no need to rejoin. You don't have to be a member of the gym. This is not a catch. We're not trying to get you back into the gym and then going to sign you up for a membership on a no join fee, blah, blah, blah offer. This is just, we miss you. We care about you. Come back for a health check. We'd love to help you with your health goals. Another example um, is to say, look, there's an open weekend. We're opening it out and doing some maybe some Facebook ads or going out to um, local health um, locations, health food shops or um, cafes that are maybe less healthy but willing to have an association with your club and say, you know, if people buy £10 worth of coffee and cake, then they get a free health check. Or, sorry, not free, funded health check. But to run open weekends or even open weeks and say, we've got a limited number of these health checks available. Um, maybe they are discounted. If you hit a certain, certain target or demographic, you know, if you are over 40 and doing this and you've bought a cake like that, that entitles you to um, one of these health checks. You're actually narrowing it down, but trying to keep it open to everyone to bring lots of different people in. So just a couple of ideas. I've, I've got four case studies of, of clients that we are running this from a strategy and commerce point of view, just to give you a, a kind of outline. Um, a PT gym um, in the Midlands already had to, already had uh, tinnitus scales um, and they offered the funded health check. Um, it was a health MOT. We use that quite a lot because people get the um, comparison between, you know, you get your car checked every year or, or probably service twice a year. Why not get your, your body um, checked. Um, it wasn't a massive success, I'll be honest. We got 13, but just 13 bookings. Most of the people we were talking to were actually leads and prospects that had clicked. Um, but, but 12 appointments from those 13 bookings, there was a no-show. Um, there weren't any follow-up bookings, and this was a really interesting... I probably shouldn't include it as a case study as such. Um, but ultimately, they did sell lots of PT off the back of it. Their personal trainers weren't completely dialed into the health check um delivery listening just bring people back next month let them go they really wanted to work with them and coach them and set pt goals with them um, but it certainly covered well, it was more, more than covered the, the campaign costs um, the second one a lot more successful it is a health lounge rather than a pt studio um, they actually have a body composition unit and a 4d body scanner um, and when we weren't paid um, so you had to pay £25 to even get the health check. But again, ex-members um, and uh, people yeah, who'd, who'd left even before lockdown, 16 bookings straight off the first campaign, all had a follow-up booking. Um, the people delivering these really get the, the method. Um, the health lounge has some e-gym kit. I think one or two people have joined on a full membership, but that is, that is absolutely not the offering. I had a mystery shopper go in there yesterday and he was told that... He, um, he didn't need to join the gym. It was not about, so that the, the, the coach delivering the consultation said, I don't even need to tell you about the gym. He was actually interested, uh, but he's not going to join that. Um, but the value just from those 16, this is just from a, a one month build it up. Um, it doesn't sound a lot, but well, three and a half thousand pounds income over the next 12 months from those 16 people that have joined. That's a one month campaign. Once we go onto socials and Facebook and start to push this out, which we're already doing, that you could almost say that's going to be, you know, 12, 12 times that over the next year. Um, the third one, 
um, is a, an EMS studio up in Coventry. Um, they've got multiple sites, but we've just tried it at one. They have to need to again and all their sites. They had a funded, so effectively free health MOT for all their non-member contacts. So it was close to a thousand contacts. Um, and again, straight off the first communication, there were 20 bookings and appointments. Um, they're now, I think, 30 plus bookings. But just to give you an idea, the numbers of those 20, 15 um, said, yes, please, absolutely, I want to follow up booking. The other five are now in the different funnel, the different journey, which says, let's let's try and get them back over the next year. Um, the very first person that came in for a measurement um, joined on a full EMS workout membership and asked for 10 corporate memberships, which um, yeah blew, blew the, the gym manager and the franchise owner away. Um, but again, just from those 15 initial consultations and follow-ups over the next 12 months at a 19.99 a month membership is going to bring in 3,600 for that first part of the campaign. Again, you can if 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 they keep joining at that rate, that's that's just going to um, compound. And then the final one, a London PT hub, slightly different model, um, but they uh, they they have a lot of high end PT um, members already. Um, who they used to scan and get on the body composition machines a little bit, but now they get everyone on there and they've targeted local businesses for health stickers. It's £50 a consultation there, but then it's in the city of London. People are biting their hands off. Um, there's, there's lots of appointments happening. I'll be honest, it's hard to track the numbers with those guys, but there's certainly 20 brand new members have come in um, and of those 16 have said, yes, I want this monthly. Um, some of them will also be buying PT. We've not tracked that yet. Um, but it's all about the, the transformation um, and the, the health and well-being of city goers who obviously aren't going into the city as much. But when they are going in, they're working probably from eight till eight because it's their I'm in the office day. And they're finding going out to this PT hub and having their well-being measure is a really great break in their back-to-back -back meetings day. And there's some amazing stories off the back of that. People who just had a, a 3D scan and a measure, and they're talking about printing out 3D images, as in on the 3D printer of them. Um, one girl went out and spent hundreds of pounds on Sweaty Betty clothing and went for her first run ever and messaged the coach back going, just been for my first job. Um, other people have gone vegan, which... I was like, okay, fine. But just off the back of the, the measurement and being shocked by the stats and, and the um, the metabolic age, I'm going vegan. Now, that goes, I thought that was great, but then I've been advised, again, I'm, I'm not a nutrition specialist, but just going vegan is not great, apparently. And you probably should have some coaching. You're going to be missing out on minerals and, and vitamins and nutrients, as I say, out of my depth again. But things like nutrition coaching, we're trying, we're working with a company called OD Health who do online, really good online, um, so basically remote nutrition coaching. As a, It's just a perfect bolt-on for this kind of thing. If you don't have qualified nutritionists in, in your team, as Simon said, lots of PTs do have, have that. Um, but there's all these extras that can be um, bolted on. Really, I'm just talking about the base level, whatever you put on top, whether it is um, selling nutrition or selling more CBD oil or supplements or even selling kettlebells and resistance bands to members, you know, to go with their workout that they go and do at home. Um, yeah, the, 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 the world is your oyster as far as I'm concerned on this. So in summary, um, it's about recovery. Um, as much as it's about health, for me right now in the conversation we're having the people we're working with, it's about helping clubs to recover. And it's really important that we reach out to as many members who have left over the last couple of years or even longer, GDPR allowing. You know, if people are still engaged, if there's a legitimate interest, get in touch with them. Tell them you're interested in their health and would like to, to do some kind of measure because the measures are really crucial, a start measure and then a follow-up measure. Um, so, yeah, recovery. But then it's, you know, as your business starts to recover, it's about growth. It's about adding new product streams as well as adding new members um, uh, and upselling to them. And finally, off touch wood, there aren't going to be any future lockdowns. You know, let's talk about fire break lockdowns and, and localized things. Uh, let's, let's hope there isn't. But 
this is about the fitness industry becoming more essential okay it's not just about the gym if we carry on selling the gym and focusing on the 10 15 percent of people who like going to the gym um it's, it's going to be a hard slog out of this um, it's about becoming an essential service um and you don't need to sell the gym to these people if they want to run on a treadmill because it's getting into october and it's getting dark and cold great they'll come in and run on your treadmills for six months but then they'll leave again but with this they don't have to fully leave you can keep engaged with them if you want to so there's a playbook on this which i, I know a few of you will have already downloaded um recognizing a few of the names um, but we've set up a, a club wise uh, specific little video clip of, of the first bit of this presentation if you just want to watch that obviously Joanne will go over you can watch the whole thing again later but just just hit up ggfit.com slash clubwise and you can download the playbook for free i say for free in return for an email address back to you Joanna. brilliant thank you um guy that was that was really really interesting um and i hope um that everybody on the call has you know is, is able to you know, make use of that those those great subscription models and, and perhaps implement them at their at their clubs. Um, but um, before we sign off, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the um, my body product from Clubwise because it's a it's a simple sort of no fast way of implementing body composition analysis into your um, service offering. Um, you can uh, it, it allows your members and trainers to measure, record, and track body composition through both the Clubwise staff um, app and the member facing app as well. Um, and we do integrate with um, the highly accurate Tanita scale. Um, it connects via Bluetooth um, to the app um, and it makes it really easy, like I say, to the, for members to, to record track and also um, you know, monitor their progress. Um, your members just sync, sync the scales to their FitSense um, app um, after which their results can be viewed on the clear and easy to interpret results screen, which I will show you. So you've got, you can see here, it's um, they can record and monitor up to 12 measurements and set goals for each um, and to help educate um, your members on what each measurement means. We do have a variety of resources that you can access online, including um, posters and um, explainer videos and things like that that you can send out to your members. Um, FitSense also displays segmental breakdown of body fat and muscle mass, giving members additional motivational information as well. Um, allowing personal trainers to be more prescriptive. Um, and as you can see, the clear and attractive UI does make it really easy for members to track. Um, and not only that, um, my body does integrate with our integrated loyalty program, which is also app-based within FitSense, um, which means that your members um, or prospects, um, health seekers can earn reward points for um, body composition improvements as well, which can be exchanged for exciting rewards. So it's just adding that extra motivational element as well. So I just thought I would share that all with you in case it's something that you would be interested in. Um, so finally, um, we're just going to open up to any questions. If anybody has any questions about anything that we've discussed today, feel free to pop them in the chat. It must be that level of detail, Joe, that we've gone through <laughs> again. We, uh, we struggled for questions last time, didn't we? Although yes. we were afterwards. <laughs> I know. I think it's probably quite. I think we we estimated forty minutes. I'm not quite sure how how long how long it's been. We may have gone a little bit over, and I appreciate that people have taken time out of their uh, busy schedules. So, um, so that's fine. But um, yes, I mean, if anybody would like to reach out to either Guy, Simon, or I. Um, uh, you know, moving forward, then then please do. Um, I will be sending out a recording of this session so you can watch it in your watch it back in your own time. Um, and yeah, like I said, any questions or if you'd like any further information, then then please feel free to reach out to us. Um, I would include our contact details in the email as well. Um, and um, yeah, I think I think that's everything. Unless anybody has anything to add. Just a, there's, a, there's a thank you from Helen. Hi, Helen. Thank, thank, thank you for the thank you. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Helen. You know, I'd, I, would, I would say reach out on LinkedIn. Um, that's probably where if you know if, if you're looking for just you know a social follower, you want to stalk me. LinkedIn, LinkedIn's a, a good place. Or as as Joanna says, any other questions, then um, uh, yeah, just just drop, drop us an email. Happy to ask any 
uh, answer any of those. Yeah. And it's yeah, nice to see um, Dean. Sorry, Joe, come on. Sorry, yeah, no, I just just noticed that Dean um, has has popped a message in there just to say that he's worked with you, Simon, um, and helping better health seeker approach, which was successful. So that's always really positive and good to hear. Nice. That's good. I think that's it. You know, any any questions on the body composition elements can be can be fired at me. You know, LinkedIn. I'm pretty prevalent on LinkedIn and easy to find on there because we appreciate that that technology is growing and changing all the time. There are a number of different providers. Guys mentioned things like 3D body scanning as well. It can be quite quite a, a confusing field, I guess, if you're not familiar with it. And I would like to think my my previous experience pre-working for Tanita means I'm pretty open and honest about the sort of pros and cons of all the different technologies. Yeah, great. Thank you, Simon. And thank you very much, Guy, um, for collaborating with us on this. Um, you. We really appreciate your time and, and you as well, Simon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. Okay, thank you, guys. Cheers, uh, bye. Thank you.